there is the opinion expanded among young people that uh, radio engineering in the 21st century is just a vocation, that the radio science ended in the 20th century by the invention of mobile phone and Wi-Fi. I will try to defend the opposite point of view uh, with certain examples. First of all, I would like to show that radio engineers are not apart from the nano-revolution which started recently and which will determine the face of 21st century. Because among nanostructured materials, a very important role is played by so-called metamaterials, and I would like to transit to metamaterials uh, from their use uh, in the energy harvesting. The energy harvesting uh, was not very important in 20th century compared to the um, traditional energy. But in 21st century, it will be not so. A famous Russian Nobelist and uh, specialist in solar cells presented recently in La Penranta on this forum the talk entitled 21st Century Semiconductor Revolution in Energy. And, well, 20th century semiconductor revolution in the telecom. The key words of this talk were roll-to-roll -roll processing and thin film solar cells. Alferov has proved that even in Finland, under the condition of the mass production, the solar energy based on thin film solar cells will be less expensive than the present cost of electric energy delivered by Fortum, even in Finland. And uh, as to southern countries, it is uncomparably cheaper under the condition of the mass production. Thin film solar cells possess the same efficiency as the thick film solar cells, but they are much uh, more uh, cheap in what concerns the production and exploitation. And uh, they are as robust uh, to the um, uh, climate, um, uh, to the external factors. This uh, slide illustrates one of possible uh, ways to produce uh, thin film solar cells and one of possible ways to, to obtain the photovoltaic layer of thickness smaller than one micrometer in the large area panel. In this website, of the nanosolar firm, you will find the information which fully confirms the um, conclusions of Alferov and which explains in details why, if there is the uh, uh, mass production, if there is the command of the market which is not um, now not sufficient due to efforts of the oil and gas lobby, why the energy will become cheaper than the present energy if, over the world, it is produced by solar cells. However, these um, solar cells are uh, covered by uh, so-called anti-reflecting anti -reflecting coating because the thickness of the photovoltaic layer is of the order one micrometer. If we want to further reduce the thickness of the photovoltaic layer, we need to transit from the um, anti-reflecting coating to the so-called light trapping structures. And light trapping structures, known light trapping structures, are all based on metamaterials. Metamaterials are artificial composites with unusual properties. And uh, here, this is the electro electron microscope um, a picture of a typical metamaterial used as a light trapping structure for the solar cell. And here, this metamaterial is uh, located on the concave substrate. When the substrate is concave, we can observe this ni nice light dispersion. But it's more important than when this metamaterial is flat, it looks black because it traps the solar light. It doesn't uh, uh, reflect the solar light and it concentrates the solar light inside the very thin 
photovoltaic layer. In this way, we can reduce the thickness of the photovoltaic layer until 200 nanometers, keeping the same efficiency as uh, the present uh, solar cells offer. And in this way, we, we will make the production really cheap, in spite of this um, a nanostructured uh, metamaterials, uh, they also can be uh, uh, produced in a cheap way using the nanoimprint lithography and the plastic replica, um, the technology developed uh, recently by Novak and Kotler. Uh, so this structure operates uh, as an absorber better than uh, black dye because the black dye degrades under the solar exposition and become gray becomes gray very soon. And uh, here, I would like to transit to the grandfather of metamaterials. Who introduced metamaterials? Metamaterials, first known metamaterials, are so-called doubly negative material with negative uh, electric permittivity and negative magnetic permeability. They were introduced by a radio engineer, Veselago. Moreover, the discovery of double negative materials uh, which happened in 1967, was done when Veselaga was developing a new radio device, solid-state backward wave tube. And this history is uh, mm, uh, told by himself. You can find in the internet and Wikipedia and so on. Uh, these are um, awards uh, obtained by Victor Veselago and uh, his um, Veselago medium, doubly negative material in the gradient um, version uh, has been used uh, for invisibility cloaking. That's why he became more, um, he becomes more and more famous um, now and uh, recently was nominated to the Nobel Prize, uh, though unsuccessfully. Anyway, uh, this is uh, the radio engineer which thought as the radio engineer and he came to the idea of metamaterials as the radio engineer because radio engineers understand electromagnetic field visually. Next example is the example of Nader and Geta, my uh, friend, uh, as well as Victor Veselag, uh, who introduced uh, metamaterial electronics, this not new paradigm um, in the nanostructures uh, and nanotechnology, uh, short name is metatronics. Um, now, uh, the informational uh, systems are impossible without optical fibers. Um, you know the uh, advantages of optical fibers compared to usual telephone cables. Uh, however, uh, the optoelectronic um, components uh, of uh, the modern uh, informational systems are weak chain in the whole structure because they uh, combine drawbacks of both electronics and optics. And uh, it is possible to overcome revolutionary this shortcoming by introducing all optical computer. This all optical processors. When the electric uh, current is, just, is used only as a power supply. So all the Informatics is uh, optical in these future computers. And for this, uh, we need to prepare circuitry, which is optical, in which instead of electrons, there are photons. And this concept was introduced by Nader and Geta. And here you can see the first experimental realizations of optical uh, capacitors, inductors, and resistors in the infrared frequency range, uh, which uh, demonstrated the first optical circuitry uh, completely uh, replacing the optoelectronics. The next example, uh, first, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, Nader and Geta is, of course, a radio engineer, and moreover, he is, his PhD uh, thesis is in electrical engineering. So he came to this idea of all optical computer being a radio engineer from the radio um, point of view. And uh, that's why opticians uh, uh, accept uh, his ideas with difficulties. 
for them, photons are particles, uh, but uh, more uh, wave packages. And for him, they are carriers. Next and last example of my short lecture is related with uh, Vladimir Bratman, uh, who suggested the idea of the general, general generator, which is based on the interaction between the uh, beam of charges, electrons or ions, with the uh, so-called slowing wave uh, structure. Slow wave um, structure which can represent uh, the uh, array of grooves, so the corrugated surface, or can represent the uh, layered um, metallo-dielectric nanostructure. In different frequency ranges, the sizes of this periodic structure are different. However, the principle is the same. And in this way, he started from the uh, well-known uh, forward and backward wave tube, which operate in the microwaves and in the millimeter uh, uh, wave ranges, and uh, finished with the X-ray generator. You know that X-rays are not uh, coherent at the present time. And no phase of X-rays exists. However, in 20th century, there were no coherent sources even of visible light. The laser became the first known source of the coherent light. And it was a revolution in 20th century. But how to make a coherent source for the X-rays? The idea of X-ray laser was suggested in the end of 70s uh, by Samuel Cohen, but later it turned out that it was a bluff because uh, it was uh, a component of the so-called strategic defense initiative of President Reagan, which was never realized. And the idea of the X-ray laser failed. But the idea of the X-ray coherent generator suggested by Bratman was realized. And this device was built. And it was built three years after the translation of the book by Bratman into English. So the book was written in 2003. And in 2006, already, he found collaborators in Germany and Switzerland. And in 2006, German collaborators built the first source of coherent X-rays. And now this source is available, and the experiments with coherent X-rays became possible. Well, for the instance, it is still a very big device, uh, which requires cryogenic cooling, vacuum tube, and so on. However, it works. And uh, further, industrial adaptation is possible if there, are, there is a market demand. So in all these cases, uh, we need only to wait when the uh, market forms the demand for the mass production for the industrial adaptation of this. And uh, then the role of these three radio engineers in the nano revolution will be recognized uh, not in only narrow circles of specialists as now, but by general public. I would uh, like to mention that two of these three are Russian scientists, is it occasionally? Um, is it a coincidence? Of course not. I think if I were a German scientist, uh, I would find uh, three uh, of three <laughs> German uh, radio engineers, which would prove my point of view. Uh, but being Russian, I found uh, two among these three. So together with material scientists and quantum opticians, 
we radio engineers are at the origin of the nano revolution. We don't stay apart with our knowledge of electromagnetic fields. We are very, very useful. And I believe that we will take part in the uh, transformation of the world, which has been started in the beginning of 21st century, together with chemists, biologists, and material scientists. Thank you for attention.